In this video, we're going to take a look at something called a compound inequality. And there are two different types of compound inequalities. There's an AND compound inequality and an OR compound inequality. In a previous video, we've already talked about the AND type. In this video, we're going to talk about the OR type. So let me start by uh, actually recalling a little bit from when we talked about our AND inequality. That'll help us better understand the OR inequalities. So if we have an AND compound inequality, you'd have something to the effect of x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and x is less than 5. And you'll notice there are some x's that satisfy both, like 1. 1 is greater than negative 2 and 1 is less than 5. So this, this guy here would have some solutions. And you could actually combine these two different inequalities. You can absorb them into one long string of inequalities saying negative 2 is less than x, which is what this expression is saying, and x is less than 5. And so that packages these two guys together as just one long string of inequalities here. Uh, we can graph these on a number line. We're going to graph the x's past 2 but before 5. And we have closed dots on each of the endpoints because these are um, less than or equal to type of inequalities. And this would be your final answer. All right, now let's, let's suppose maybe we didn't want to graph the points on the inside of negative 2 and 5. And we were curious, how would you write inequalities to express the x's outside the middle to the left end and to the right end? Well, notice that you cannot, unfortunately, use an AND inequality anymore. For example, try a point like 7 out here. Well, 7 might be greater than 5, but do you see how 7 is not at the same time less than negative 2? You can't be at two places at once because these are on the outside. An AND inequality, unfortunately, is not, not going to work very well. Uh, so this needs to be what we call an OR compound inequality. Because if you have a point over here, we could write this to the effect of x needs to be greater than or equal to 5 or x has to be less than or equal to negative 2. Because or doesn't demand that they both be true at the same time. Only one of them has to be true. So now if you tried plugging in a point like 7, we can safely say 7 is greater than 5 or 7 is less than negative 2. This is still a true statement because the first statement is true. If it had been an AND right here instead of an OR, they both would have had to have been true. But only one had to be true because it was an OR statement. So for these OR compound inequalities, these have to be written and solved independently of one another. There's no way, unfortunately, to combine these into a, a one long string of inequalities. So if you have a compound inequality like these, you'll solve one and you'll solve the other, and then you'll have a compound inequality for your answer. So let's try it with this example here. All right, if we solve for x in the first inequality, we would divide both sides by 3. And we would get x strictly less than negative 1. And then we'd have or, if we solve for this x in the second inequality, we'd subtract 5 from both sides and get 2x is strictly greater than 10. Divide both sides by 2, and we get x strictly greater than 5. So you can't have an x that's both less than negative 1 and greater than 5, but you could easily have x's that are less than negative 1 or greater than 5. And so this is how we leave our or compound inequalities. Now to express this final answer, what we'll do is we'll make a number line like so. Okay, we'll find negative 1. And we'll find 5. Let's say here's, let's say here's negative 1. I won't put a closed dot quite yet. I'll put negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so I want to graph all the points that are less than negative 1. This is going to have an open circle because of the strict inequality. So here's the x's less than negative 1. And, and on the other side, we'll have the x's 
greater, strictly greater than five, so that'll have an open circle as well. So anybody in the shaded region would make this statement true. And let's just try one just, you know, just to be safe. Let's try maybe this point right here at six. So let's see, I shaded it, so it should make this statement be true. Let's see, six is less than negative one, or six is greater than five. Well, six is greater than five, so the or statement's true. Uh, now, if you tried somebody in the middle, like at two, let's try this one. Two is less than negative one? No, it's not. Or two is greater than five? No, it's not either. And because it doesn't make either of the inequalities true, then it would not be a solution to the compound inequality. So anyway, uh, this is how we handle or compound inequalities. They're a little different than the and compound inequalities, but basically all we do is we leave these guys written independently of each other and we solve them independently of each other. And then these guys are usually outward facing, one going in one direction and one going in the other direction on a number line.